Welcome to day 15 of the 90 day novel challenge. My name is Brad Paquette and it's time to write. So I hope that you had a great rest day yesterday because it is time to finally dig into the narrative writing of your novel. And that's pretty exciting. Congratulations on completing a novel matrix plan and making it thus far. And so, you know, if you haven't completed that novel matrix plan yet, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. Keep working on that. But it is time to begin the writing process as well. So start trickling out the word flow and maybe split your time half and half between completing that plan and getting some words on the page. And some words on the page might help you to develop the few remaining loose ends on that plan. You know, as you start to see the characters and the conflicts come together kind of organically as you write them. Take the time. This is important. Make sure that you take the time to now apply that to your plan and update your scene list accordingly so that you're not flying blind. Because today we're going to talk about one of the major assets of using the novel matrix plan. And that is that you can now write your book in any order. So there's a big debate among uh, writers about whether you should be a plotter or a pantser. And plotters meticulously plan their novel ahead of time, and pantsers just sit down and write by the seat of their pants. Now, both of these strategies have problems. Plotters sometimes suck all the creativity out of their projects, and then they get bored as they go because it fe begins to feel too mechanical, and even the fi final product sometimes fails to feel authentic and inspired. Also, if you don't know what you're doing with your plotting, then you know simply making an outline isn't necessarily a helpful resource if you haven't taken the time to study a system like, for instance, the novel matrix. The problem with pantsing is that a lot of times it fails to yield workable results. You know, you can write for 30,000 words before you realize, oh, no, you know, this, this idea doesn't work at all. And then you've wasted all that time. So I always tell people, you know, you're either going to learn about story structure before you write or after you write. And frankly, it's going to be a lot more efficient if you learn about it before you write. If you just pants your novel and let's say you do complete a novel manuscript that you're that you're happy with, then you're going to take it to somebody like me, a developmental editor, and we're going to sit down and we're going to tear it apart. We're basically going to have you apply story structure to it at that point. And that's going to be a whole lot of work. So I found that the ideal solution is in the middle of that balance. It holds in tension, the creativity of pantsing and the tools of plotting. And I call it planting. And so for planters, you've made a novel matrix plan. You know basically what the major elements of your story are so that you can move forward with confidence that the story works. You are writing in a direction that is very likely to yield workable results. But at the same time, you haven't plotted to the rigorous degree that you've taken the fun out of the writing process. As you move through your plan, you still have a lot of creativity and inspiration to apply. You still have a lot of freedom to determine how these events unfold and even to make tweaks and changes as you go. So the, the real one of the major values of that planting system is that it puts you in a position to write any scene at any time. So when you're pantsing, by necessity, you have to just write the scenes in order because you don't know what's going to happen next until the previous thing happens. What else could you possibly do? So the advantage of planting is that because you know the major story elements, if you're inspired to write a different scene, something out of order, you can go ahead and do that. So as you've been planning the novel, there might be a scene that has just really stuck in your brain. There could be even a scene or an element of the plot that inspired everything that you've planned so far. You can start there, put your inspiration to its most useful effect and start in that place where you are very inspired and then work out from there on the manuscript. Or you may have a life experience, you know, over the next uh, how many days do we have left? 75 days here. You might have an experience that just perfectly inspires a particular scene. Maybe you're stuck in traffic one day and there's a scene where your character is stuck in traffic. Maybe you have an argument with a friend or your spouse and that inspires elements of a scene in which that happens to your protagonist. So when those life events occur, you can go ahead and just jump to that scene that you're inspired to write. And it doesn't even have to be some grand inspiration. Maybe you're just like in the shower or doing the dishes or mowing the lawn one day and you have this inspiration for, you know, a particular line of dialogue. 
this the the novel matrix plan allows you to just jump directly to that scene use that inspiration that you have and then move on with the plan so each day as you sit down if there is something that you're inspired to write i want you to go and i want you to write that inspiration doesn't work like a bank account where you're going to use it all up and then you're going to be out in fact, inspiration and creativity works in exactly the opposite way. When you use your creativity and the inspiration that you have, that generates momentum. And then you'll find that you have more inspiration and creativity for maybe the parts of the manuscript that haven't excited you yet. The more creativity you, the more creativity you use, the more creativity that you'll get. Now, this is also helpful in the other direction. Because some days you're probably going to show up to write this manuscript and you're going to have zero inspiration, right? It's like, man, you know, you got to put in the hour because that's what you agreed to do. That's the deal, right? You got to put in one hour a day if you're going to write this manuscript. So you sit down to write, but it is just a slog and, and you don't feel inspired to write anything. The value there is that you can go and just write the next scene. So just work left to right on your plan in order on those days when there's nothing in particular that you're inspired to write. And now as you move left to right through your manuscript and you encounter scenes that you wrote out of order, um, you'll probably need to make some tweaks at that point, right? Because even though you did have a plan, it is a, it's a planting plan. So there is some variability there. So you might get to that scene in the third act and realize that uh, there were some nuances of the character that changed, or maybe you developed a character's description a little bit different than you anticipated. So you need to make those changes at that time. But nonetheless, those will be small changes as you encounter that scene in your plan. And so Planting and using a, a system like the Novel Matrix puts you in that position where you can apply your inspiration to its best effect. When you're inspired to write something, jump to that scene, write what you know about that scene. Even if it's only like a couple lines of dialogue and that's all you got right now, go ahead, jump there. Throw in the couple lines of dialogue about where they're going to belong when it all comes together. And on those days or those moments when there isn't anything particularly that you want to write, you sit down and you don't sit there and say, what do I do now? What should I write? But you just jump to the next section moving you know, chronologically through your plan. And that's where you work today. So it is time to move forward in that writing. And you have a new assignment now. Your assignment every single day for the next 75 days, accepting your one day of rest per week, is to write for one hour per day. Over these next uh, thir 11 weeks, we're going to be talking about strategies of how to stay um, encouraged and motivated. I'm going to be sharing helpful strategies for uh, maintaining your productivity and tips for your writing that are going to keep you moving. They're going to keep your brain stimulated. Um, they're going to help you to improve as a writer even through the process. So make sure that you continue to check in with the 90 Day Novel Challenge. Make sure that you continue to stay connected. Start that routine. Give us five minutes a day to just pump you up and, uh, and, and bring you up to speed so that you can really make the best use out of the remainder of that hour. And I know that if you do this, it's going to pay off for you. And 11 weeks from now, you're going to be looking at a finished novel length work. And that's amazing. This week, we'll specifically be talking about some tools and strategies to get your word count up and moving so that you're really making steady progress through this project. So right now, it's day one. Don't sweat the word count. Just dig in and have fun. Put in one solid hour. Begin to feel what that feels like. And really, if you get exasperated or if you still have work to do on your Novel Matrix plan, don't worry about finishing out the hour. If you, if you find yourself just out of steam, uh, just spend a little bit more time just pondering, thinking through your plan, you know, considering what happens next and kind of just fleshing out your concept of who your characters are and what's going to happen and have fun with it. Never forget that crucial element. So without taking up any more of your time, because you have work to do, happy writing and be blessed. <laughs>